Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, so this is going to be part two. We, we tried to find a planting spot for this ESALQ. This is a Plinia Fitrantha variety ESALQ. That's an acronym for a university in Brazil where this is like selected or found, okay? <laughs> Makes a nice big fruit, but the skin is a little thick, and you're not just gonna eat the skin like a red. Big fruit, a little bit larger seed, fruit several times per year, beautiful tree. Pretty tough too, pretty strong. I think it could take down to like 25 degrees briefly in Florida. 25 degrees in Florida ain't the same as 25 degrees in Cal <laughs> California. Got him back, baby. This you know, Chris, I think I'm trying to get a little better about them roosters talking over me. But it's like I get going, I start trying to make sense, and then they run their mouth, and I can't make sense anymore. It gets to me. I tell you what, let's sneak around this trailer, huh? You think or what? Yeah, you're Wait, good. Whatever, yeah, you yeah. know what not to film and what to film. Yeah. So, I found this little nook right here. I think I want to paint it at. Right here. And this is where my buddy's been dumping soil. But I've already planted Patanga tuba. Patanga tuba. Rare Garcinia, right? And uh, Patanga tuba. So it's going to be like this circle of thunder. Boom! Breaking ground. Uh, don't cut your toes off. So remember, when I do this in this Florida soil, I go in a circular motion. And I just start digging in circles. Try not to cut your toes off. And keep the dirt close to the hole. You don't go like this. You keep it close to the hole. That's that Virginia creeper. This is an annoyance here. I guess the birds like to eat it or something. This is full of roots and such. So my property's wet, and I think this will be a nice little area that's kind of um, drier than usual because it's on the mound, on the mass of roots from palms and oak trees. So you're gonna get some good wicking action from those other roots, I believe. Now, I can't substantiate that claim. It's just a theory of mine. But we are digging through some substantial roots that appear to be attributed to those cabbage pumps. <laughs> and let's see how fast we can do this. I'd like to plant more trees, but I think I'm just gonna do this one. And um, we're supposed to have an impending storm coming, but I don't think it's gonna be a serious one. If it is, if this thing blows over, I'll stand it back up again. That's what I do to them, Chris. They blow them over, we stand them back. Look at these vines. Look at these vines. The one there and the one there. That's like aliens. <laughs> All right. Any questions from the comments and viewers? Oh, they're not live. Well, let's pretend like we got people asking questions. Well, Adam, why is it wah, wah, wah? Let me tell you why. Because the soil here is different than you. And if you're in South Florida, you got that lime rock, you need a pickaxe to get through that. This is playing in the sand. Look at this sand. It's kind of rich. It's kind of pretty. What's that? What I hit here? Gosh, it's a nice piece of wood there. You never know, you might find treasure. You might find treasure. I'd say the pH of this soil is about 6.8 to 6.5, 6.8, which is slightly acid, which is good. But it'd be better if it was 5 or 5.5 for these trees, you know that? Tell you what. But now when you go down south in that lime rock in South Florida, and the marl, it's like a clay and like a muck, and it's just like... It is not good for, for these trees, typically. You can mm. keep them alive, definitely Sabara. Okay, this tree that I'm about to plant is grafted onto Sabara rootstock. And Sabara does very well. For most of these other trees, Sabara does pretty well, even when the, jeez Louise, like a railroad tie in there. <laughs> Sabara does pretty well, even on some of these soils that have a slightly alkaline pH. It's more widely adaptable than a lot of the other varieties. So, shoot, if you go to Fruit and Spice Park, they have Sabara planted out. Plinia jabuticaba. Okay, the species, the genus is Plinia. The species is jabuticaba. The variety is Sabara, the most common in the world. Even if you go to nurseries today, they still have it listed as Myrcearia cauliflora. 
And it's not, or Plinia cauliflora. It's not. It's Plinia javaticaba variety sabara, most common in the world. It's the one that everyone sells at all the nurseries with the smaller leaf. It makes a black fruit. It's a, it's a king. It's like one of the best. It is probably one of the best varieties. But it takes a good, you know, eight years, 12 years sometimes to fruit from seed. If you get lucky, I've seen people do it in five or four. Really unusual, man. Mm. It can't happen, but it's just like with people. You know what I mean? Some people just mature earlier than others. Is there anything that signifies if it's a gonna fruit earlier or later? Just it fruiting or not? Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. That's it. Flowering. So I forget what I was going with that, but basically the reason I graft them onto Sabara is because it's just it's the best one for it doesn't sucker out. It's just solid. It's good. It's the king. It's like the the go to. But if you go to look at, cutie, look at this guy. Look at his chest coloration. That's Hot Shot Purple Gorilla. And um, we just like that rooster a lot. He's close to our heart. So we're talking. Did I break your pipe? I'm sorry, brother. Nah. If you go to Fruit and Spice Park, they have a red Jabba Jacaba and Sabaras planted all. Okay, they have Sabaras planted all out. And they look decent. They used to look decent. I don't know what they're doing now. Depends how much rain they get. If there's no rain and they're forced to water with the well water, they start to look like. But then if you have really good rain, it's like God's taking care of everything, you know? They don't look bad. They're getting that good that good pH water from the sky. It's not the same as well water. So some years, some years, there's they just look gorgeous there. And some years, they look real bad. But the Sabaras always look better than the red. There's like a red that's planted there. It looks so pale all the time. Hmm. But that just goes to show you that like, you know, if you go to Fruit and Spice Park and you know they have lime rock and poor pH there, for growing um, jabuticabas and sabara. And um, you know, if they're doing good with sabara and keeping them green and keeping them fruiting over and over, that shows you that it's a good versatile rootstock that's widely adaptable. And then right next to it, you have like the, um, the red that's just struggling. And it's like, all right, well, I'm not gonna use the red as a rootstock. And the red, the red suckers out too much. It makes a bunch of suckers. It throws suckers like crazy. And it's, it's just not a good one for a rootstock in my opinion. And there, there's other trees though, varieties I think that are good use for rootstock, like Grimmel, for instance, could be a really good rootstock, maybe for drought tolerance. Okay. And, and um, pH tolerance as well. It, it, it does really well, even like with city water and like high minerals, the, 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 um, the Grimmel does really well. But it's like, who wants to go and top work a Grimmel, you know, graft over a Grimmel, that's the best. There's a big, there's a big chunk here or something here, Chris, it's getting to me. We're gonna need an ax. Let's see what happens to me. I'm being lazy today, dude. I'm digging this hole like a whatever. What's this going on here? What's going on? What is oh. this? It's like a, it's like a. Like a rock. It's like a rock. <laughs> I think it might be a live oak root. Looks like a big old root from that oak tree, Chris. I don't want to have to go get an axe, but I might need to. <laughs> I might need to get an axe or shift the hole or something. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. I'll tell you if it's rotten. Feels pretty viable to me. That's going to take an axe to get through. <laughs> this is going to be a part three of this video. <laughs> Shoot, Chris. I know I got the axe. You want, should we go get the axe and try to figure this out? I got, I had a root, guys, and I've already committed to this hole, and so now I gotta go get the axe. And if I can get through this stump, do you want to sit here and play elevator music or follow me over this way? Come on. Look at what I have to go through, people. Here's my rope swing I fell on and hurt my cell phone. Remember that, Chris? Yes. Well, I decided I'd swing down the tree, and uh, I forgot that that was attached at the bottom. Almost busted your head. I got whiplash bucket of sweet taters. All right, now hold it up. We got license plates. We got keys and cameras. All right, I think my axe is over here. Found the axe. That could have taken us five years to find that thing. That's one thing about being on the farm is you put something down and you leave it out there and it rusts and you never find it again. I like to do that. Look at them birds over there. Look at them just killing the land. 
They're like little cows. Not really. More like a dinosaur. That's what happened to them, Chris. They turned into little... Oh, too easy. That's too easy. Maybe it wasn't viable. Viable. I need a sharper shovel and some bigger biceps. I almost poked my eye out. Did you see that? No, I missed it. I put my head down. That's dangerous. Listen, I seen a guy. I put my head down. I wasn't watching and then this stabbed through my hair. But I seen a guy and he would put bottles, like, you know, a bottle, inverted plastic, because he had already poked his eyes so mm. many times. You know what, though? We're going to do, can we do away with some of these? these mm -hmm. eye pokers? We know where they're at. Yeah, I, I, I really, I, I personally can't stand these bamboo poles sometimes because I, I have stabbed my eye a couple times. I, I'm just that clumsy, man. I can't be around bamboo poles. I'll destroy my eyes. So put bottles on them upside down. Plastic bottles is something I've seen a guy do. And I think that works to maybe save his eyeballs from being stabbed every once in a while. Okay, let's throw this hole up. Let's get this going. Remember, don't keep the dirt far away. Jeez, I'm, I'm, if I'm getting paid by the hour, I'm fired. This guy is slacking on the job. There's people that would have had this planted a long time ago. Okay. This is a decent soil here. I'm just trying to trim out these edges and bust off any ruts. I said my grandma to call them ruts. Ruck beer. Okay, now, we can take the tree and kind of visualize how we want it planted. First, we can slide that layer, that's easy. Now, something smells disgusting. That's a recurring theme in these videos. <laughs> something smells really good. <clears throat> when I plant a fruit tree, I, I, I have this in mind. Which way is north and which way is south? Here, that way is north, just about. So I take the tallest portion of the tree which would be about like that, and point it north. And I, I want it to be up a little bit. So I think that's about right. I may take out a little more soil. You know what, no I won't. I'm gonna leave it just like that. It's up about four inches from the soil level, but we'll just pile up some mulch above it. And then you could go ahead right now and start pulling the weeds on it. Pull the weeds. And then I rake out that top layer there a little bit. That looks good. Make sure it's just like how you want it. Because I'm gonna drive up, walk up one day and see this thing and say, that is the tree. Um, I think so. I can't deny it. That's okay. I mean, I might do this. Just a hair. I feel like it's a little better like that, yeah. And then, uh, some kind of trash in there with it. A piece of plastic. Okay, now watch me fill it in. Uh, you take the shovel. Remember, I put it all right next to the hole so I didn't have to go chasing dirt around. I think this one good and high. They do like drainage. They don't want to sit forever saturated, even though they can. It's better for them to have a decent drainage. You know, they got to be wet, then dry. Wet, then dry. I'm getting my workout today, brother. Thank you for your help again, Chris. Absolutely. So, I'm going to um, I'm gonna take the end of this shovel. No, sorry. I'm going to take this axe and push down around. This is very important to get like an old stick or a shovel handle or something to push down around these edges and really pack that dirt in. At least I do this in my type of soil because if you don't, it can create these holes that it just, the tree will dry out or have issues. So make sure to really pack it in there real good. And we're definitely gonna need to bring some mulch, some mulch over to this to um, raise up around it because there's just exposed roots everywhere. They'll do fine like that. I've actually got one planted over there from a while ago that does have exposed roots still, and it's fine. Eventually, they break down, and like, you can, yeah, I mean, we can go over and check on it or whatever if you want, but it's just kind of got like a muffin top, you know, which is fine. 
they figure it out over time. And it's better than being too wet, man. Planting them too low is a, is a, is a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Dirt in my hand the whole, hold on, buddy. Oh, I'll get it. I've been doing it this way instead. I think that works out real nice. But this is just about done. I'm just gonna pack this in real good all the way around. And don't be shy. And then if we had like a rake, I could start to, I could start to rake. Ooh. I'm sweating today. We're getting there. The water's definitely gonna wash this away. <sighs> There's something over here that just smells god awful in this soil. Wow. It may be a stinkhorn or maybe a pile of dog feces, but every time I do a video, I get the most dandy smells. Let me check the bottom of my shoes real quick, because this is just getting to me, brother. No. No, no, no. This is just out there. It's just in the world. There's a smell right now that is just gorgeous, and I only get it every once in a while. It could just be my upper lip. Well, I need to condition my beard. I think so. Um, but anyhow, that's about it. I need to just pile on some mulch, and then the chickens are going to tear it apart. Now, if I had a mind for it, I'd put some bricks around this because the chickens are great. Works for a while. But um, it's definitely going to erode. But we're going to water it and keep mulching and re mulching and pile up the mulch. And pack it down on in there, brother. It's probably not necessary what I'm doing, but I just like the way it sounds. I might step it in. Lock it in, you know? And then it just needs a bunch of this mulch here. I think that's about done. It's getting there. It almost looks like it's lived there its whole life, Chris. What do you say? I'm looking like it. We planted a tree today, didn't we? Oh, yeah. Plinia Petrantha variety. E-S-A-L-Q. E-S-A-L-Q. That's an acronym for some kind of university where it's selected or found. It's a nice fruit tree. I like it a lot. Isn't that pretty? It is. And if you look at that graft union down there, that's about a three-inch graft union. <laughs> When I done it, it was a real long graft, but look at that. And that's the rut stock. And let's go take a look at that one I said's got a muffin top. I like muffin top. Ooh, she almost tripped on a weed over there. Creeper almost. That's Virginia Creeper. Gotcha. Got a okay. Look at this old muffin top here. This one was drying out in the pot, and I said, I'm sorry, you got to get planted. And then the chickens like to scrape it along, but look at that. And it's doing just wow. fine. I just go like that sometimes if I can remember. Muffin top. Look at it peeling. Look at all that peel come on. It's like a snake. Is it fruiting yet? This thing I think could be a hybrid of a gremlin and a sabra. Come over here, Craig. Look at this. We're going to end it with this. Look at that snake skin. I want to make boots out of that, brother. Look at all that come off like that. Wow, look at it. It's just like, sorry, I had to shed my skin there. That's a pretty color for that bark. It's like a yellow. It is. It's not typical. I don't know what this variety is, brother. I think it might be a... a um, look at the leaf okay. This very well might be a, a Grimo and a Sabra. I don't know. Maybe not. But it's something unusual. Thanks again for your help, Chris. Freedom Fruits. Absolutely. Flying Fox Fruits. We'll see you guys next time. Make me, you make me work hard for the money.